Good day and welcome to Understanding Adjustment, a presentation created by the Department of Student Counseling at the Cape Peninsula University of Technology. So before we dive into the presentation, let's just understand who the Department of Student Counseling is. We are situated in the admin building on the second floor room 2.700. We offer all students at CPUT individual counselling and career counselling. It's really easy to book an appointment. Just don't forget to bring along your student card. Come over to the admin building or email us online. The information is in the final slide of this presentation so that you can contact us. And please remember that all our services for you students are 100% free and complimentary. We really look forward to meeting you and chatting to you and hope you enjoy the presentation. So first year has started, but maybe it's a case of so far not so good. Maybe you're experiencing some of the following, like the teaching styles are different to school, you're stressing about money, you're really homesick or feeling incredibly lonely, you have a much bigger volume of work than you used to. You're unable to make new friends and you just really don't feel like you fit in. Or maybe you're just feeling unexpected emotions or feeling overwhelmed and you don't actually know how to cope. Imagine you could only communicate in emoticons and you had to message your friend or your mom or your dad or someone back home and let them know how you're feeling. Which emoticon best describes where you're at right now? Don't worry, these feelings are all completely normal for a first year student. You might be dealing with something called adjustment. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about adjustment and try to unpack it and what it really means. Adjustment is the internal process in the mind that takes place when you undergo change and pass from the familiar, so in your case, the familiar would be life pre-first year university, to the unknown. And right now you're sitting right in the middle of the unknown, which is first year university. You're most likely to experience change in four major areas during your first year, uh, as kind of highlighted below, academic, social, financial, and emotional. So when you think about social, change can happen in the sense of forming new relationships. Maybe it's trying to maintain old existing relationships. Maybe you have a new romantic interest. Maybe your social calendar is empty and you're trying to fill it or it just looks different to what it used to. Maybe you're living in a shared house for the first time with people you don't know. Um, academic. Uh, then, you, you know, you might be experiencing change in terms of increased workload. Uh, you're having to self-manage your own time and your work. Suddenly you've got a lot of assignments or you're having to work in groups with people you don't know. Um, change that might affect you in the financial kind of area of your life. Think about budgeting. Oh, nobody likes that. Maybe you're having to earn extra money and you're juggling studying with a part-time job. Maybe you're dealing with bills for the first time. These are all changes that can be very scary. And then lastly, emotional change in your first year might be dealing with this new identity that you're forming away from home uh, for the first time. Maybe you're uh, acknowledging a different sexuality that you're identifying with now for the first time. Maybe you're feeling depressed or anxious. There are a range of different emotions that may change with first year university. And I guess adjustment is really the process of dealing with all of those changes. What makes it more challenging in 2021 is that we've got COVID to deal with too. So COVID really requires rapid, constant adaptation and vigilance. It makes it really difficult to plan ahead which makes it kind of feel like you're a little bit out of control. And it requires all of us to remain abreast of safety protocols, regulations, class attendance, 
and to be constantly on guard, which really can be exhausting trying to keep up with what is happening around us. So just when regular adjustment as a first year student is actually difficult or challenging enough as it is, COVID's come along and really raised the game. So don't stress. Adjustment this year is a lot more challenging. Something else worth considering is that adjustment doesn't have a time limit. So where change can be quite a sudden or quick thing, um, you would have probably experienced change almost instantly moving from school to university, from an a city to a new city where CPUT is, moving into a student accommodation or res or a shared house, having to deal with your own finances. So the change can be very quick. That doesn't mean adjustment is as quick as the change. Adjustment is a process. So there really isn't a time limit or a deadline that you need to meet when it comes to adjustment. You need to work through developing the tools and skills to help you adjust to your change in a time frame that suits you. And while it doesn't have a time frame, it does have three phases. And we're going to look at Bridges transition model just to understand the three phases of adjustment so you can see what or understand what's going on right now, what to expect and the end of the road or the light at the end of the tunnel and what it feels like when the adjustment process has been complete. Phase one is called ending, losing and letting go. And this basically, it ha this is when change first occurs. So think of all the change that you're experiencing right now as a first year student. So you're probably in phase one. It might, you might experience feelings of fear, denial, anger, sadness, disorientation, frustration, and a little bit of like a, a sense of loss. Um, and what it might feel like in your day to day life is you might feel really homesick. You might really miss your family and your friends. You might feel isolated and so lonely. You might feel a little bit depressed or anxious or confused or even unhappy. So don't be alarmed if these are feelings that you're experiencing as a first year student. In the second phase, the neutral zone, you're starting to try to adapt to the new way of living, so your new student life, but you're still kind of clinging on to that old life that you've, you've left behind in a sense. You might feel a bit confused and impatient, uh, you might be skeptical about what you're doing, and you also might experience like low productivity, uh, have low, uh, have feel anxious about your role in, in the world, in your friendship groups. You, you know, the confusion, it, it might really come in here, and it might transpire daily as like actual stress and anxiety. But as you work to generate and create and come up with these tools and skills to cope with the adjustment to being a first year student, you will move into phase three, which is called the new beginning. And phase three really occurs when you've like embraced being a student, student life, first year of university, and you've got the tools now that you feel like you can cope with all these changes that have been thrown at you. You're gonna feel highly energized, confident, motivated, excited, and that's really something to look forward to. You know, it might be difficult and you might feel like you go through a little bit of a dip to get to the new beginning phase, but it is so worth pushing through to get here. You're definitely, in a, on a day-to-day -day basis, start feeling more open to learning and new experiences, feel more organized, and more accepting to this way of life. But how do you get through these phases? Just like the butterfly has different straight stages of transformation, so will you go through different stages in your transformation into a university student. Have a look at the pictures. Think 
about what you've heard and think which stage you are in now. The jump from, uni from school to university is big. So don't be alarmed if you need to change the way you look at things. There's a lot more work to do and sometimes you won't be able to learn everything as you did in school. University classes are different to high school classes. There's much more material to cover and more work to read outside the lectures. Lecturers won't check up to see that you've done your work, and classes are much bigger. At school, you didn't make your own schedule. At university, you can come and go as you please. At the same time, things are no longer predictable. The strange environment with new kinds of procedures and new people can create the sense of an emotional roller coaster, both exciting and scary. This is normal and to be expected. When you were at school, you often lived with your family and, and people that you knew well. But now there's a lot more freedom. There's also a lot more responsibility and maybe even a new roommate to deal with. So feeling insecure and confused and homesick are really normal things. Because these feelings are so normal, there's really no need to feel bad that you're struggling to adjust. Don't believe those thoughts in your mind, those depressed and anxious thoughts that say something like, everyone else is adjusting and getting, getting used to university. What's wrong with you? Remember that almost everybody is thinking this too. It's just that some people are hiding it better than others. It's normal to experience adjustment problems. Adjustment is a process and not a weakness. It really is okay not to be okay. So one of the first things that you can do to help yourself adjust is to accept your feelings. Don't expect to feel fantastic at first. Expect the opposite. Everyone is finding their feet. However cool and confident they may appear, anxiety and loneliness at this stage are completely normal. Loneliness is the most common emotional struggle that students experience. It's easy to look around and feel like you're the only one who hasn't found your peeps, but that's not true. Give yourself time to make friends. Don't feel bad if it doesn't happen right away. And P.S. Don't compare your life to what other people are posting on social media, Instagram and Facebook. It's not true. They're only showing the good part of their lives. And a lot of those people are feeling so lonely that they spend all their time posting pictures of the life they wish they had. Find your tribe. It may take some time, but keep worth it. Keep Keep trying because it is worth it. And university is a great opportunity to explore different interests, to even change your image. Try to find a club or an organization to join that really excites you, even if you've never tried it before. Attend new student events, join clubs and reach out to the people in your classes. But stay connected to your original tribe your family and friends from home. It takes time to build up good friendships and these people are golden. So make a time each day or once a week to text or call your support network at home. Time management is key at university because of the increased workload and responsibility. So use a planner, a diary, whether you stick to the old fashioned calendar or planner, or you use one of the latest apps. A planner helps you to see all your classes and assignments and commitments in one central place. This will help to keep you organized so you can stay on top of assignments. 
allow yourself plenty of time to complete the assignments or study for exams, and this will give you the best chance to succeed in your course while minimizing the stress at the same time. Think about how to divide up your time and get a clear idea of how many hours a week of academic work you need to put in. This will help you to make the most of your free time. Did you know that your physical health really affects your mental health? One of the most important things for good physical health is to get some good sleep, around about eight hours a night. For a good night's sleep, the tip is to turn off your device an hour before bed. These devices emit blue light, and that tricks your brain into thinking that it's daytime, so you won't be able to sleep. Exercise is also really healthy for your mind. It may block negative thoughts and distract you from daily worries. Exercising with others and doing sport is an opportunity for social contact and connections. Exercise can lift your mood and improve your sleep patterns. Healthy food can also help you to think more clearly and more alertly. It improves concentration and attention span. An unhealthy diet can make you feel tired, stressed and depressed. You might feel pressured to pull all-nighters for homework or to put sleep second to socializing. But pay attention to how all-nighters and parties make you feel. Whether it's spending more money than you can afford, using drugs, having sex, or even just going out when you're really already exhausted, you do not have to do anything you don't want to do. Please remember, we don't have to do this all alone. We know it's tough and we are here for you. So if you're struggling with adjustment and it just feels too much, please reach out for help and seek our support. It's all so new, but we are here for you. Please find the details for contacting student counseling below. We really look forward to accompanying you on your journey and connecting with you. Here are some top tips for coping. So, fast forward to the end. Imagine how you'd like to feel once you've adjusted. Imagine what it would look like when you're feeling good in your, in your space, in your new space. Estimate how long it will take you to get there based on how long it's taken you to adjust to things in the past. Number two, remember the tools and experiences you've already had. You've made it this far, so you must have been doing something right. Write a list of the things you do or have done well and stick it up on the wall to remind yourself when you're feeling down. This is a really good tip. And lastly, just do it. Set the goals, break them down into small, manageable steps, and start small, and the motivation will follow your behavior. Good luck. I know you can do it. Coping well is really about getting a balance. So if you look at the four categories below, the physical, the social, the cognitive or academic, and the emotional, why not write down some activities that you can do in each one of those blocks each day? And once you've covered all the bases, when you've paid attention to all those areas of your life, you should be coping well. Here's an example of a self-care list. Getting lots of sleep, that would be for the physical. Enjoying the sunshine, I think that would be for the emotional. Getting a hug. That would be social and re talking to people that might be for your cognitive or reading very important and interesting information for your course that would be cognitive so write some self-care lists for yourself in case you forget what all the things you need to cope brilliantly